Okay, in this lesson, we're going to look at something called moments. Okay, it's not moments as in like, we know, I'll see you in a moment. These are mechanical moments. So the moment of a force is the turning effect of the force on a body. Okay, so if I push something and it turns around, then I'm creating a, a moment on that body. All right, and it's trying to turn the body around. This simple test of strength, okay, we'll have to wait till the lesson. But the moment of a force about a point, all right, here's the formula here. To work it out, you just do the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance from the point. So if you add like a, a rod here and you add a point here, and say you made an upwards force on this body here of say seven newtons, then the moment of this force about that point would be seven times this distance here. Say it was three meters away, the moment would be seven times three, which would be 21. So in short, all right, the short formula is the moment equals FD where F is the force and D is that perpendicular distance, the straight line distance, all right? Um, and normally, because obviously a, a moment could create a clockwise rotation or an anti-clockwise rotation. See, this force here would make this body rotate this way, which is anti-clockwise. But if I put the force going downwards, say here, that would create a turn effect this way. A clockwise so normally people think about clockwise moments as positive okay so any anti-clockwise moment would be a negative moment the unit of moments is newton meters and if you can't see why it's because i'm doing force times distance force is measured in newtons distance is measured in meters so my units will be newtons times meters which is known as newton meters okay right then Let's do an example. So the diagram shows a uniform rod. All right, remember a uniform rod or a uniform object means that the weight of this object acts at the center of the body. The center of mass is at the middle of the object. It's got length three meters. I can see that all together and it's got mass two kilograms all right it rests horizontally on supports of a and c where ac is two meters no props find the magnitude of the reaction at each of the supports so i'll just jump in here a minute just real quick and i will insert a blank slide Give me two seconds, uh, high background graphics. There we go and get rid of that. So sorry, like I was saying, um, all this information is on the picture. Find the magnitude of the, re of the reaction at each of the supports. So you probably would like to pause the video uh, and draw this picture, all right? And then come back once you've drawn the picture and we'll start adding our forces and weights to this picture. Okay, welcome back. So the first thing you add to this picture, all right, is the fact that this rod, this rod's got mass two kilograms, and because it's uniform, it acts at the center. Okay, so I'm going to do a little arrow pointing downwards. So obviously, the weight acts downwards. I remember the weight wouldn't be two kilograms. Remember the weight of a weight of an object. Remember is mass times acceleration due to gravity. All right, so this weight here would actually be two times G or just two G Newtons here, okay? Two G Newtons. And this distance here, I hope you agree, because it's halfway across, is 1.5 meters. All right. Now, obviously, there is a reaction force at the supports because this rod is pushing downwards onto the beam and 
by I think it's Newton's third law. All right, you know, for every reaction, sorry, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So there's going to be a reaction force. Here. You should know this from previous years. Um, I will call this reaction force here R1, and this reaction force here R2. All right, and I don't think there's any more forces acting um, on the on this body. There's not. All right, I got to find the reaction forces at each of the supports. Two unknowns. That probably means two equations. All right. So if this body here is resting on the rods, on the support, sorry, then it's not moving. So remember, this system actually is in, is in equilibrium, which means there's no resultant force on any part of this body. Okay. So from your 12, first thing I'm going to do here, okay, is to resolve vertically. And obviously, as always, I'm going to take the upwards direction as my positive direction. So if we can see that R1 and R2 are both acting upwards, so R1 plus R2, but if I'm taking away then, see, this 2G force is acting downwards. So that's going to be, that's going to be a negative force, and that equals zero because the system's in equilibrium. So I know that uh, that means that R1 plus R2 is equal to 2G. Okay, I'll call that equation one. To, to solve this now, I need another equation because I got two unknowns. So what we can do here now, all right, we're gonna take moments about well it's up to you right? you could take you could take the moments whatever any point on the rod you want but i'm going to take moments about point a you'll see why now all right but a and as always my clockwise direction is my positive direction okay so think about now the, the force is trying to produce a turning effect on a well r1 is trying to push A, all right? So remember the moments are force times the distance from the point. Okay, now if you look at R1, you can see, can't you, that the R1 is trying to push A this way up the page, which, you know, is a clockwise moment. But the cool thing here is that the moment is force times distance. So you might say that it's R1 times but an r1 is zero meters from a r1 is actually at a so there's no distance okay so actually this is r1 times zero that's great because it's going to eliminate r1 done that one the next one i gotta think about see is this weight here is going to be trying to push this body about a downwards which again is clockwise so it's positive so it's the force times the distance. See, this force is 2G and it's 1.5 meters away. All right. So plus 2G times 1.5. So I've done this one. I've done this one. And now that this R2 force is trying to push the body upwards, which would have the effect of rotating it counterclockwise. Okay. So this is going to be a negative force here. So I know I'm taking it away. The force is R2. And how far is it away? Well, we can see the, on the picture, it's two meters away. And the system's in equilibrium. So there's zero overall turning effect. So this means now that, well, you know, however you want to do it, I know 2G times 1.5 is 3G. And this would be 2R2 here. That equals zero. So in the end, if you rearrange, you get 2R2 equals 3G. And if you divide by 2, you get that R2 is 3G over 2, which is 14.7 Newtons. Now, see, I want to find R1 as well. So substitute into equation 1, and you get the R1 plus 14.7 equals 2g 
obviously take away the 14.7, you get the R1 equals 5.1 newtons. All right, and the trick we used here of, of taking moments about a support point, we'll use quite frequently from now on, because see, if you take a moment about the support point, then you can just ignore the reaction force at that point, because it'll be at the point, it'll be zero meters away, so it'll always go away. So in future, okay, when I do this sort of thing, I am just gonna, I, I would just normally see, I would just, I would just ignore it completely. I wouldn't even bother writing it down. Because if you take moments about that point, you eliminate any forces at that point because the turn effect is zero. So I think we've solved this one. We have, we found the reactions at each support, so we're done. But I think now that I have to stop there because that was quite a long explanation. Yeah, it was. So I'll stop there, okay? And I'll do example two in the next video. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Example two then. Um, this one, there's no picture given. Okay, so if, I think we should pause the video all right, and then try and draw a picture that sums all this text up. I will do the same, all right? And then come back to me, okay? All right. So welcome back. So here's my is my picture that I've drawn, okay, a uniform rod AB. So it goes from A to B. It's got mass three kilograms. So I know that the mass, which is here, the center of mass acts downwards, three G Newtons there, okay. And I know that it's at, it's at the middle, because it's uniform. So I know this distance here, for example, is 1.5 meters halfway across the whole, oh, sorry, one meter across, sorry, because the whole beam, the whole rod is let, got left two meters. So a particle of mass five kilograms is attached to A. Okay, so there's a five G force acting downwards here. A particle of mass two kilograms is attached to B, no problem. So it's an equilibrium on a smooth support at the point C, where AC equals X centimeters. Okay, now, it doesn't mention if C is past the midpoint or, you know, before the midpoint. But it, it won't really matter where you put it as long as you're consistent. So I'm going to put the support point here, okay? My pivot point here is resting on the support, okay? This is point C. Sorry. And uh, distance AC is X centimeters, okay? X centimeters. So that's cool. Right, um, find the magnitude of the re reaction of support at C. So there's a reaction force in there, okay, at C as well, and the value of X, all right? No props. So again, the same, same sort of trickier, I suppose, really, to find the reaction force, okay, then I will just resolve vertically, okay? So I'll just say vertically, Remember, you're really here, it? We are applying F equals MA here, aren't we? Okay. And my positive direction is upwards. All right. You get that, well, the only upward acting force is R. So and I'm pretty sure then that all the other forces are acting downwards. They are. See, I've got 5G, 3G, and 2G acting downwards. So R take away 5G, take away 3G, take away 2G equals zero. And if you rearrange this all for R, all right, you get that R equals 10 G Newtons. That's 98 Newtons, okay, because G is 9.8 meters per second squared. So I think I'll probably go back and put that on the picture now, okay? Because R is gone. I know what R is now, don't I? Okay. R is 98 Newtons. I've also got to find the value of X now. And obviously X is a distance, so that, that's going to link to the moments. So it's up to you now, okay? I mean, you could take moments about C, all right? But I'm not going to, I'm gonna take moments about A. C because X is directly related to A, all right? So I'm gonna take moments about A. Moments about A, and again, clockwise is my positive direction. Okay, so Let's think then, let's think. Um, so here we go, where was I 
getting it now. So yeah, gone through all this. It's an equilibrium, no problem. Um, yeah, I think if yeah, it's all good. I think yeah. All I gotta find now is the, is the I was just checking the make sure I got the reaction force right. All I gotta find now is is this distance x here. Okay, nothing else to worry about for the minute. So about a now, right? My first force. I was it now? Remember, I can this five G force. I can ignore. Can't I? Okay, because it's acting at a, so it'll have no turning effect at all. Okay, um, but this ninety eight newtons force is pushing upwards. All right, so it's going to try and turn it upwards, which is going to be actually an anti-clockwise moment. All right, so for this one, you're going to get minus 98 times x, you see, because the force is negative because it's pushing anti-clockwise, and it's so it's 98 minus 98, and the distance is x. Okay, so that's, that's that one taken care of. I've done that one. Now think about this 3G force here. This is pushing down, all right, which is going to have the effect of turning the body clockwise. This is the positive moment. And can we see that this 3G force is one meter away from A? Okay. So plus 3G times one. Sorry, that's that one done here. And the other force, again, okay, see this 2G is also pushing down. So it's going to produce a clockwise turning effect. It's 2G. I remember the whole bar, the whole rod is two meters long, so it's going to be 2g times two. And that equals naught because the system is in equilibrium. So if you keep on going with this now, all right, I mean, you've got minus 98x plus 3g plus 4g equals zero. And then if you rearrange and solve, you're going to get 98x equals 7g and i think then if you do if you do 7g divided by 98 all right you get that x equals 0 0.7 remember though we were measuring our distances when we in meters so this is 0 0.7 meters but can you see in the question it said ac equals x centimeters okay so i better specify this in centimeters instead 0.7 meters is 70 centimeters and then we're done okay so when we actually do this lesson for real there's going to be a main task okay on an exercise from a book so that'll be the main task just do a quick time check yeah i should have time now i think for a checking question as well huh? so yeah i'll give it i'm gonna give it a whirl and see how it goes okay so here's the, here's the checking question so again, I pause it, read it. Luckily, in it, some of the pictures done here for us. Okay, so we're kind of good to go. So take a look at this one, and then come back to me. Again, I, I really need to get out of my over doing these thinking, these new slides. Put it there. Sorry, go back to it. So uniform B may be of length five meters. So the whole thing is five meters and it's uniform mass 60 kilograms so that's 60 g acting downwards and i know this distance here is half of five so that's 2.5 meters so done done a load of 40 kg is attached to b so there's a load here it's going to be 40 g newtons pushing downwards it's held horizontally in equilibrium by two vertical wires attached to A and C. Okay, remember in these wires, there's going to be a tension force in there. All right, pulling the beam upwards, the rod, the beam upwards. Um, the tension of the wire at C is four times the tension at A. Okay, so if I call this T for tension, hopefully you see this, this will be 40 because it's four times this tension. If I model in the beam as a uniform rod, yep, and the load is a particle. That's what we're doing. Find the tension in the wire at C and the distance CB. Okay, so I also need this distance here, which I might call X just for you know, just for brevity's sake. Okay, let's do it then. So as always, I'm gonna resolve vertically first of all. All right. So vertically, 
I think it was M8 upwards. Um, hopefully by now, so I'm going to put a comma instead, this was clear. You see that I'm doing upwards. I got the tensions, my the two tensions. I've got T at 4T, they're both acting upwards. And the, I think there's only one more force acting down, yeah, on the other, in the vertical direction, there's the weight. Oh, sorry, not I lie, actually. I got 60G and 40G. They're both acting downwards. So take away 60G, take away 40G equals zero. So if you solve this, now, you end up getting 5T equals 100G. So in the end, I, you get a T equals 20G, which is 196. But I think I'll leave it as a G for the minute. Okay, so this is 20G here going upwards. Oh, so this is four times 20G. That would be 80G there. Okay, sorry, Newtons. So tension in the wire is C. We've done it. Okay, that's 80G, Newtons. If you want to put it as a, as a decimal, then feel free. I right, define the distance CB now. Um, again, it's up to you. You can, you can take moments about a certain point if you want. All right, doesn't really matter too much. I think I, I think I will take moments about point B for a change actually, because this distance relates to B. So um, let's do the moment about B. Again, remember I'm clockwise is my positive direction. So let's do it then. Okay, so this this AEG force here is pushing me this way, which is a clockwise moment. Okay, and it's x away. So it's going to be AEG times x. That's that one done. This weight here is pushing me down. So that's an anti-clockwise motion. So that's, see, that's halfway across, that's 2.5. That's going to be minus 60G times 2.5. All right. And then the only other one to worry about now is this tension here, which is going up. It's going to produce a clockwise moment. And it's actually the whole beam away. So it's five away. So that's going to be plus 20G. Is 20G right? Yeah, times five. That equals zero. So if we work it all out now, okay, I'm gonna leave the G's in a minute. 80 GX, take away 150 G plus 100 G equals zero. So I think if you tidy this up, you're gonna get 80 GX equals 50 G. And now if you divide by 80 G, you're gonna get, I think I got X equals 0 0.625 meters. Remember, this was the distance CB. And with that, we are done. Okay, so I'll stop there. And then hopefully now if you watch this before you come to the lesson, you might not understand it completely, but you'll have a better understanding than you did before you watch this video. So thanks for listening. See you soon.